everybody, this is Birch. Um, here's a viewer mail. We, I'm reading a lot of viewer mails. I'm trying to get through them, but again, the more I do of this, the more seem to come in. So it's it's a never ending, a never ending story. Um, that horse had it coming to him. Anyway, let's get into this mail. It says, uh, "Hey Birch, I just watched your viewer. Uh, there's your viewer. I just watched your video answering a viewer question. Thank you. I'm a little. I'm all convoluted this morning." about conflict of interest when both reviewing and creating comics. I appreciated your thoughtful response. I have a Substack and a YouTube channel, I'll put the links below, where I review comics and I'm creating my own graphic novel. Currently, I don't think there's any conflict of interest in doing so, provided I'm transparent with both my reviews and opinions and my relationship to the material that I'm creating. Of course, and, and kind of my point in that video is, I don't think there's a conflict of interest at all. There just may be con con uh, consequences, rather. There just may be... If you're going to be a reviewer that's like a shock jock type angry reviewer and you're really going to go at people, then you just have to know that, you know, when you start doing your own comic, you're going to get it, it into, you're going to get it back. You know, you, what you put out there is going to come back at you. So just be, be prepared for that. I, I have had some people who um, they've been super just a hole in uh, their reviews and they do YouTube videos like like super pricks. And then they turn around and they put out a comic and then they're like completely shocked and buttered when people treat them the same way. And it's like, yeah, I mean, you just you just got to you just got to be aware. And if you if you can take it, then, you know, no big deal. And, and quite frankly, you know, developing a thick skin is very critical in the comic business. A lot of people in all forms could could have it. Anyway, there you go. Says, I believe that the back to the mail. I believe the comic industry really has to refocus on attracting younger readers, both for the health of the industry and for the benefit of young people. I firmly believe that comics are a gateway to a lifelong love of reading. That is 100 percent true, and should have a wide variety of genres and potential readership. The majority of comics by the big three are clearly targeted toward adults or young adults, or adults that uh, kind of are young in the brain, adults that. Uh, you know, are in a state of arrested development and, and really should grow up a little bit. Anyway, not, not that I'm pointing anything out, but when I read some of these anthologies, it's like, okay, you, you clearly want to be back in college, but you've racked up some so much student loan debt you can't afford anymore. So you're, you're doing your thing. Okay. Uh, sorry. Back to the mail. I truly wish that we could see more material like Primer from DC. Oh, God, me too. That comic was a wonderful all-ages book that any parent could feel comfortable handing to their kid. I intend to create my own kid-friendly book, mainly because I still don't see a lot of good quality, well-written books for kids out in the market. What are your thoughts about good quality, kid-friendly comics? Do you agree that we need to have more of that in the industry, and do you have recommendations for any kid-friendly comics? Thanks for your, uh, your kind words. Uh, your, your, thank you for the kind email. And uh, this, this YouTube link, which I'll put in the description of the video if I can at all remember, and I'll try, is uh, it's uh, Black Maniac at substack.com. And uh, you can get to that channel and see what this guy's up to. Uh, Black Maniac Arts. So uh, thank you very much for the mail. Um, I absolutely believe that uh, you know comics are are 100. It's a gateway to reading, and they are, they're absolutely things that need to be uh, there need to be more kid friendly comics out there. And by kid friendly, that doesn't mean you know stupid. It doesn't mean you know, dumbed down. It means ones that are designed to attract kids. And I'd argue there are, Primer is an absolute perfect example of a great comic for kids. It, it is, it appeals to kids. Both my kids absolutely loved it. And I, I just, it was a great, great comic. Um, there's a reason why they go for kind of Dogman and Babysitter Club and the Raina Tugmeyer books and all that kind of stuff. And it's not because they're they're just wanting to read about kid drama, although, you know, that that is appealing to them. It's that they they actually want to have something that, you know, that hits them at, at their age level and, and feels fun and doesn't have a lot of boring bits to it. And then here's the here's a way you can kind of tell is if you uh, you turn on Netflix and there's this show um and I can't remember what it is. It's, it's like a family of superheroes. And it is a stupid, stupid show. I think it's a Nickelodeon show. It's like the mom and dad have powers. And then there's uh, 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 four kids in there. It's like two older kids, two younger kids, like a baby. And it's like the, the it's not the terrific. It's like the, the fantastic. I don't know. It's anyway, 
that it's a family and they're getting into stupid Nickelodeon type adventures. And they they don't do too much with the powers, but the powers are always and there's like an evil cat in there, I think, too, is or I don't know. A, I can't anyway, my daughter, my younger daughter, loves that show. All over that show. And and it's it's stupid, but it's uh, you know, it's it's nowhere near the level of writing and, and good material of uh, of primer, but she loves it. And the big reason she loves it is like the action moves along and the characters are having funny moments and there's not a lot of, you know, stupid scenes. Meanwhile, you know, my older daughter really wants to watch Stranger Things. We let her watch the first episode of that. And she's like, nah, it's okay. She like, there was a lot of just like dialogue. Like what they, they spend a lot of time on like the parents and then the, the Nancy characters like trying to date. Steve and it's like ah, oh, it's cringy. She goes ah, it's cr- so cringy. It's it's boring. I I just it it was moved along so slow. And the answer is, if you look at a lot of comic books, there's panels and panels and panels designed to appeal to Peter Parker's social life or what's going on with a debt collector or any of that kind of stuff. And kids are going to tune right out of that. Um, there are a great number of kid friendly books out there and. You're going to hate this answer, but it's manga. Manga does a really good job, typically, of appealing to kids. My Hero Academia, One Piece, kids love it. Adults love that, too, but kids love it. There's not a lot of filler in there. I mean, there's a lot of flashbacks, but the, the story moves itself along at a different pace. It's kind of, um, it's, it's hard necessarily to understand where the differences are coming in, but... But anyway, the, uh, the, the comic, um, I had to honk at somebody in the road. The guy was just like wandering right into the road and out he comes. Anyway, I, it, it, I it's a Tesla. He's letting the car do the driving. It's a problem. Um, it was weird because like a slow motion guy just wanders right into the road. No problem. Oh, well, I don't hear a lot of honks down here in Texas. I don't know if, if do people, is there, is it illegal to honk here? It blew my whole train of this video. Stupid car thing. Anyway, um, (laughs) the point of it is, if you look at Primer, and you look at manga, and you look at this stupid Nickelodeon show, you'll see a familiarity of how the story is paced, and what's being presented, and how it's all going. You see, you see a very, you know, it, 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 it all flows around the same way. And if you look at kind of Marvel comics, or DC comics, or Image comics, they have a different pace and a different thing going for them. That appeals to a different audience, and kids are a very important part of, you know, getting those readers of tomorrow. So definitely, definitely, I think, uh, get out there. I'm glad you have a book. I I wish you well with it, and uh, yeah, absolutely wish you the best. I want to see that book out there. We need more uh, books that are going to attract kids into comics. If you attract kids into comics, you're then buying the generation that's going to be 20, 30 years in the future reading comics. And uh, that's a big reason why manga is doing, you know, terribly well is because five, six years ago, it really started to connect with kids and those kids are growing up and they're sticking with manga. So get in there and and take that market back. That's absolutely what you need to do. Anyway, thank you very much for the mail. I wish you luck with your comic. If you have a question, feel free to send it in anytime you like. Um, the description is uh, in the, in the description of this video I'm still bothered by this stupid car. I don't know, I, what, what the hell are you doing? Driving and, and general uh, traffic laws and lanes and everything else in Texas are a vague suggestion. I, uh, I, it's, um, it's fine, but yikes. Anyway, thanks for listening.